After nearly nine months of waiting, the K3 arrived on a rainy, dark day in January. The package weighs in at about £15. I'm sure yours won't stop looking like this for very long. As you can see, the package is very well packed, and thanks to UPS Express, it only took a couple of days to get here. Once you unpack the large box, you'll find a number of smaller boxes containing all you need to build your K3. Here are the contents of the main box laid out ready to check. This is the art of the K3, the RF board, and this is the starting point of the build. The first part of the build is fitting the 2D fasteners and the few standoffs to the board. Nice and easy start really. Next is fitting the filters. Now this will depend on what filters you've bought with your K3. I bought the extra AM filter and this one is shown fitted already. An easy job, just one screw. The filter slots start with the ice band width and work down right to left to the lowest bandwidth filter that you're fitting. All the five pole filters carry a frequency offset number. Make a note of it. Mine was minus 89. Next we fit the low power PA module. This module is just pushed into the empty space on the main RF board. It is a tight fit so make sure it's right down. OK, now we fit the front panel support and screen. Note the two 2D fasteners on the top lugs. The next module we fit is the very small K3 mixer board. This is secured by just one screw and a standoff. Now we need to fit the left hand side panel, but first fit the angle. I was surprised that the clips that are on the ends of the angle do not have locating lugs, since with only one screw they can be twisted around. Here you can see the nuts that hold the angles in place. Now we prepare the right hand side panel and the rear panel. The feet are a tight fit. I found the twisting method detailed in the manual worked well for me. If like me you bought the Auto ATU, it's time to fit that too. By the way, I found the Auto ATU works very well for me. Seems to be a better match for the Auto ATU in the K2 I find. This is just the relay side of the ATU board for you to have a look at. Now fit the other side and the rear panels. Beginning to look a little bit more like a radio now, isn't it? Here's a nice feature of the K3, the built-in data mode interface. Must admit I built something like this for my old K2, but this is much, much better. Also fitted with proper line isolation transformers too. The board simply plugs in and is secured by one standoff to the rear panel. Be careful when you fit it, as you need to pull back the uh, board a little bit to get the standoff to clear the rear panel's lip. When done, just fit the rear cover plate. Now it's time to build up the front panel. The front panel comes with its own hardware kit, so you'll need to get that sorted out as well now. The front panel just pushes onto the main board, but do do it carefully, it can be difficult. By the way, if you find it hard to fit, check that the small LEDs over the pots are in line. When fitting, put the two encoder pots in place and secure them with the supplied nuts too. Next. Fit the clear perspex lenses. They're very nice with their beveled edges. The DSP board is the next board we're going to fit. 
This board just fits onto the rear of the display panel. Although I haven't said anything about it, do be careful of ESD when you're angling these boards. Now we fit the front panel assembly to the main radio. Now be very careful doing this. I found I needed to remove one of the two screws from the 2D fastener to allow the front panel to be fitted. If you have to do this, don't forget to put that screw back in once it is fitted. There you are, we're getting there now. In fact, it's time to put the power onto the radio, so let's have a quick check and see if it works. Hopefully, when you do this, you won't see any smoke. <laughs> um, when you first power up your K3, you will be greeted by this beautiful display. You'll find that the VFOB, uh, that's the bottom right hand corner, will display some form of error message, since we've not really finished yet. Um, but if you touch any of the controls, turn the VFO knobs, that will clear and uh, you'll get a display rather similar to the one in this photo. Next, we, after we've done the little check, we can just carry on the build and we fit the reference oscillator module. This is a standard one, the 5 parts per million. Um, yours may be different from this if you've gone for the 1 part per million option. We carry on and we fit the synthesizer module. Next, we fit both of these modules onto the rear of the front panel support. Three cables are pre-made and supplied with the kit that are installed at this point too. Next, we move on to the lid. Here I fitted the stiffening bar and pushed the speaker cloth over the four screws. Here is the loudspeaker fitted. Make sure you use the fibre washers under the speaker where the manual tells you to, to avoid any rattling uh, when you've got your, the volume turned up on your K3. Now it's time to look at the bottom panel. Uh, there's two sections to this. The rear section has two fixed feet that you need to secure. The front section has a, a bail bar that pulls down. Now this bail bar can be a bit of a pig to fit but it does fit in the end. Uh, just take care and you can get it in. Uh, if you've ever built a K2 you'll know what I mean. This one's just as difficult to fit as well. Next the manual tells us to put those panels on one side and to carry on and fit the noise blanker module into the main body of the K3. The next part to fit, if you have ordered one, is a general coverage filter board. This fits to stand off so you've already fitted earlier on in the build. Now turn over your K3 and fit those bottom panels that we fitted the feet to in a previous stage. While we're on about it, why not fit that top panel too? Since I'm building the 100 watt kit, um, I don't actually have the, the blank panel that fits at the rear of the K3. If you're building the 10 watt version, that panel will be supplied with it. OK, well done. Now we've got the K3 finished to a certain degree. Uh, we now need to fire up the basic radio to do any more of the, the checks and tests that we need to do. The manual tells you how to do the calibration. And it's a very straightforward, very simple affair. Basically just select a, a menu item and tell it to calibrate. And everything else is done for you really. Very easy, very quick. Now my K3 was calibrated, I thought a good idea would be to update the firmware to the latest versions. And there's a very nice uh, firmware update utility on the Aircraft website. Uh, just one click and it does everything for you. OK, that's the K3 working as a 10 watt radio. And I must admit it does work very well. Uh, but now I've got the 100 watt PA slab and I'm going to fit that.